So this is second video about common filter. Two weeks ago, I posted an introductory video about common filter where we discussed about the intuition and how to use the common filter equations to solve a concrete state estimation problem in robotics. Today, we'll take a look at how to implement the common filter in Python using NumPy. In this video, I'll also use the exact same example that we used in the last video. Just for a quick recap, I'll show you the problem that we are trying to solve again. And after that, I'll show you the actual implementation using a Jupyter Notebook. And to make things easier for you, I'll provide the link to download the Jupyter Notebook in the description below. Okay, let's begin. So this is my Jupyter Notebook. And first, let's just import the things that we need. As promised, I will only use NumPy to implement the common filter. But I'll also import matplotlib so we can make some plots later on. Now before we go to the actual problem, I put here the key equations that we need to implement the common filter. Here are the assumptions that we made in common filter. And these are the equations that we need to perform the prediction and the update steps. Please check my previous video if you're not familiar with this yet. Now let's look at the problem that we're trying to solve with common filter. We have a robot that moves diagonally across an empty room with a constant control input ut for 10 times steps. The state of the robot that we are interested in is its x and y coordinates in the room. Let's say the movement of the robot is in fact perfect, but we don't know that, and all we have is the noisy motion model. In addition to the noisy motion model, we also have a noisy sensor that tells us the location of the robot inside the room, and we also know the measurement model. We are given the A, B, Q, H, and R matrices as well as the initial belief state of the robot. Our task is to use common filter to get a better state estimate at each time step. Let's first try to understand the problem so we know why common filter can be helpful in this situation. To do this, we will plot and compare the ideal trajectory with the trajectory that we would get if we rely only on the motion model. We will also compare the ideal trajectory with possible measurements that we would get using the sensor if the robot is at the ideal location at each time step. Since we are not using an actual robot with a sensor, we will simulate the sensor measurements using the measurement model. So first, we define a variable for the number of steps, which is 10, and then we define the ground truth states. Remember, the robot starts at x equals 0 and y equals 0, and should end up at x equals 10 and y equals 10 after 10 times steps. So to do this, we can use np.linspace twice, once for the x and once for the y's and stack them together like this. So here, the ground truth states is a numpy array where each element contains the state of the robot at each time step. What's next? Well, we are interested to see the performance of state estimation if we rely only on the motion model. So let's define the variables for the initial state, which is given as 0, 0. Let's put this in a list called motion underscore states so we can store the state at each time step following the noisy motion model. And then, we define all the given information that we need. To use the motion model, we need the control input ut, which is constant and given as 1, 1. And then, we also define the a, b, and q matrices, which are also given. Then we have a for loop, and for each loop, we sample a noise from the multivariate Gaussian, with mean equals 0, 0, and q as the covariance. After that, we take our motion model equation and just write the equation like this. Remember that this is just a linear motion model equation that you see in the previous section. Also note that we are taking the latest state in our list motion underscore states. Once we have the new state, we append that to the list so we can plot them later. Next, we are also interested to see how a sensor would perform given the sensor specifications. Again, in the real world, we won't need to do this because the sensor should just give us the state estimates. But in this notebook, we're just going to simulate the sensor measurement using the given measurement model. And just like before, we have a list to store the measurements so we can plot them later. And we initialize this with the given initial state. And then we define H and R matrices. Then we also have a for loop, and in each loop, we sample a noise from the multivariate Gaussian with mean equals 0, 0, and R as the covariance. Then we use the equation of our measurement model to simulate the measurement. Note that I'm using the ground through states here because we know what the sensor reading would be if we were at the ground through state. 
also notice the indexing here where I'm using I plus one because we assume we only receive a sensor reading after we apply the control signal. So imagine initially the robot started at x equals zero and y equals zero and then we apply control input ut and the robot should have moved to x equals one and y equals one and then we get a sensor measurement. We then put the measurement to our list and just repeat it. Now let's plot the results. I'm just going to convert this list first into NumPy array so we can easily index them and plot them. Now let's plot it using matplotlib. So first, let's plot the ground truth, and then plot the state estimates from the motion model, and then the ones from our measurements. Let's set the limit for both x and y axis, add some labels, legend, and fix the aspect ratio. Done. Now run. And as we can see, estimating states using noisy motion model and the sensor measurement alone produces noisy state estimates. With common filter, we can get a better state estimates by combining the prediction from the motion model and the sensor measurements. Now we understand the problem, let's implement the common filter. Concretely, we just need to write two functions for the prediction and update steps, and to know when to call these functions. Let's first implement the prediction step. Again, here's the equation. Let's define a function called predict, and it is a function of a, b, q, the control signal ut, and the belief mu t and sigma t. We literally just write the equation like this. Next, let's take a look at the update step. These are the equations. Again, let's define the function as a function of h, r, the measurement zt, and the predicted mu and sigma that we will get after performing the prediction step. Again, we just take the equations and write it down. So first is the residual mean, and then the residual covariance, and then the common gain, and then the updated mu, and the updated sigma. And that's it! We now need to write a loop so we can run our common filter at each time step. Let's do it! So first, I just wrote again all the given information here. So we have mu0, sigma0, ut, a, b, q, h, and r matrices. Then I'll make two lists to store the measurements as well as the filtered states so we can plot them later. And then I initialize mu current and sigma current. So this is our belief state at the current time step, which will get updated at the end of the for loop. Or in other words, we update this every time we call the update function. And then we have the for loop, and at each time step, we perform the predict step. So we now have the predicted mu and predicted sigma. And then we get a measurement, which again, in the real world, we just get this from our sensor. And then we do the update step by passing in the predicted mu and the predicted sigma into our function, and update the mu current and sigma current. Finally, we store the sensor measurement in the filter state, and note that we are just taking the mu here into the list. Then same as before, we convert the list into numpy arrays and we just plot them all. So let's plot the ground truth, the trajectory from motion model from the previous section, the sensor measurements, and the filtered states, which is the one we just got from using the common filter. And as we see here, the state estimation from using the common filter seems to be better compared to when we rely only on the motion model or sensor measurement alone. And that's all you need to implement the common filter. I encourage you to copy this notebook and play around with it. For example, you can try to change all the parameters that may affect the performance of the common filter and see how it actually performs. And that's it for today. Again, the Jupyter Notebook is linked in the description below. Thank you for watching and I hope this content is helpful for you. In the next video, I'll try to show you where the common filter equations come from. See you next time.